What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, Athlinex.com. You asked for it, and I'm bringing it. The perfect push workout. Complementing our perfect pull and legs workouts in our PPL series. Guys, look, I understand that perfect is subjective, right? It's in the eye of the beholder. I mean, even Jesse's been called perfect, but then again, that was his mother. When we look at creating a perfect workout, no matter what it is, you have to understand there's a lot of selections that go into that. I'm making my bold selections here and putting them into this workout for a reason, because I believe it's going to work to help you to build muscle. That being said, guys, I want to break it down for you step by step and show you not just what we're picking, but why we're picking it so you can get the gains that you're looking for. All right, so now a quick refresher for those that are unfamiliar with the PPL split. It's push, pull, and legs. On the push day, you're training your pushing muscles, generally your triceps, shoulders, and chest. And on pull day, you're training your biceps and back, noting that there are a lot of back muscles and we're accounting for those in that workout. And of course, you have your legs on a specific day as well. And the way we're going to actually break this down in this PPL split is by starting with a pull workout, following it with a push workout, which is what we're going to show today, and then go into our legs. Now, after that, you have two options. You can either repeat this cycle for six straight days of training before taking a day off and then repeating it all over again, or you can do what we do here, which is take these three days and then put a rest day in between and you start these three days again, followed by another rest day. This is called an asynchronous split and you're getting more frequent rest days in between these workouts, which allows for more recovery, but it also on the off side here is it's creating an unpredictable off day. Some people don't like that, but I do believe that the benefits of getting that extra off day are going to serve you well. Which brings us now to our workouts in the exercise. And that's right, I said workouts. Because in the perfect push workout here, we actually have two of them. Push one and push two. And the reason for that is we're going to select exercises that actually help to complement each other from push one to two, but also help to stand alone with their own benefits. And I believe when we're trying to accomplish something as big as creating muscle growth with this split, we need to have more options at our disposal. We're going to break them down into two parts. Part one here starts with our classic push exercise here for actually building strength as one of our main mechanisms of driving growth through overload. And this is the barbell bench press. And we're going to perform this as four sets of four to six. We're going to leave one to two reps in the tank though, not taking it all the way to failure. However, it is important that as you start to fatigue that you may have to adjust the weights accordingly to allow you to continue to fall within this four to six rep range. The next exercise, however, is one specifically designed to complement that one, and it's a high to low crossover. And the reason why I like the crossover, and I've talked about this in many videos before, is it gives me the chance to do what the barbell bench press doesn't, and that is to get the chest into a completely contracted state by getting the arm fully adducted across the body. Now, when we take the angle from high to low, we're allowing ourselves to follow the fibers to hit more of the lower chest, the abdominal fibers here, but most importantly, it gives us the opportunity to get that full adduction of the hand across the chest. Good hypertrophy exercise, good spot here at the number two spot, three sets of 10 to 12. And now we're gonna shift the focus a little bit to the shoulders. And here I'm gonna go with the dumbbell shoulder press. Now I have the opportunity here to try to do an overhead press with a barbell, but I believe that is better served as a strength building exercise that's going to get its own day. Hence, push two. Now I'm doing the standing version here rather than the seated version. And if you watch my iron face off video, you would understand why. When you sit down, I don't like the restrictions that come from pushing your scapula back into the bench, which can disrupt normal shoulder mechanics. Not to mention, if I can get you on your feet, I always like to take that opportunity. You can perform that for four sets of eight to 10, slightly higher rep range, again, reserving the lower rep ranges for strength-based progression in that second day. We then move on to that second exercise, following up very much the same way we did with the crossover, and this is the one and a half side lateral raise. Again, trying now to focus a little bit more for hypertrophy on that middle delt. And we can do it with this one and a half rep style that increases the time that we're under tension in the exercise. So we take it up fully all the way, we come down halfway, and then we have to go back up to the top again. Eliminating all momentum from the movement, and again, forcing the muscle we're actually trying to get to grow to do the work. We perform this one in three sets at a higher rep range of 12 to 15. Again, really focusing on good quality contractions, not muscle substitution that often happens with the traps and simply just momentum swinging the weight up. And now we come back here, we move to the direct tricep portion of the workout. Understand, the triceps have been working through all the other exercises you've been doing so far, but in this case, we're going to go directly at them. And we're going to actually pair them up with, get this, a pulling exercise, a bicep exercise here on push day. Why? because we have an opportunity when we pair this in the entire PPL split we've put together here to get some additional volume 
for the biceps on push day without interfering with what we're trying to accomplish here in our pushing exercises. And that is, we start with a big push exercise for the triceps, my favorite, the lying tricep extension. This we're gonna perform for three sets of 10 to 12 to failure, and then we're gonna go right into the dumbbell weight or curl. And these are both good exercise selections here. Number one, the tricep exercise is hitting the long head primarily. By getting that good stretch in the bottom position, we're able to do something we haven't necessarily done through the other exercises. When we push overhead or push out in front, the medial and lateral head tend to get most of the work. The long head here is gonna get some extra special attention through the first exercise. And again, the dumbbell waiter curl is also a long head exercise, but this time for the biceps, serving again as the perfect complement and giving us a chance to get some additional volume. Three sets of 10 to 12 on both ends of this superset. And before we call it a day here, guys, no Athlete Next workout is complete without making sure we pay a little bit of attention to bulletproofing our body through the use of some correctives. And my corrective of choice here is some rotator cuff external rotation. Guys, simply grab a band and perform this boring but all important exercise to finish out this workout three sets of 15 to 20. When you do a pushing workout, you are internally rotating a lot. The muscles on the front side of the body tend to round the shoulders in and pull them into internal rotation. Simply doing some additional direct external rotation here is the perfect way to finish this first push workout. And that brings us to push workout number two. And as I said before, not just for the sake of doing another workout, but meant to complement what we either did or did not do in the first push workout. There are certain things I still want to accomplish here, and it starts right off the bat with a heavier focused overhead barbell press. And again, we're going to do this the same way we did the bench press with four sets of four to six, leaving one to two in the tank, making sure to adjust the weights accordingly to make sure you stay in that rep range on all four sets. Again, serving as the compound lift here meant for giving us an opportunity to increase our strength to drive hypertrophy through that mechanism. We follow that up by shifting our focus away from the shoulders, now to the chest again, and this time with a variation of a bench press. The same way that we brought the dumbbell overhead press in in lieu of the overhead barbell press, now we're gonna bring a dumbbell press in in lieu of the barbell bench press, and this time we're gonna do the dumbbell underhand bench press. I love this exercise because it allows us to actually work the upper chest even though we're in a flat bench position. And it saves our shoulders and front delts specifically from the overload that would come if we were trying to do this as a regular incline dumbbell bench press. So we get the benefits of upper chest training without having to put ourselves in a position mechanically that might overtax your shoulders. Now with a brief reprieve from the shoulder work, we're now able to go back to it directly. In this case, just like we did in the first push workout, we're gonna to try to hit the middle delt more specifically. As a matter of fact, we're also gonna get the benefit of getting the rear delt involved here. But we're gonna do it by driving with a posterior chain pull dominant movement. That's right, a pull dominant movement on push day. And the reason we do this is for that exact reason. If there's any fatigue that has accumulated to this point, you're gonna have a chance to offset that by pulling rather than pushing more and still working the same muscles. The abduction row is simply getting that shoulder into the necessary abduction to hit the middle delt and the rear delt this time, but we don't have to drive that through a lot of the typical pushing movements, especially like a side lateral raise. So we lean forward and drive into abduction by rowing the arm back and out, making sure to keep external rotation at the shoulder, but you'll see and feel that this will light up the middle and rear delts very effectively, allowing you to train it even heavier as well in the eight to 10 rep range, while still allowing you enough energy to continue to attack the rest of this push workout. Which brings us to our fourth exercise here, back to the chest, is the dumbbell floor fly. Now you guys know how I feel about the unsupported version of this done on a bench. I feel like it compromises the health of your shoulder and increases the risk where we don't need to. If we simply do this down on the floor, we get two additional benefits. Number one, we have the safety net of the floor to make sure that we're not overstretching the capsule of the anterior shoulder. And secondly, we have the opportunity to go a little bit heavier because we can take these up and we can even cheat them up to the top if we have to and lower them down. What we're really focused on here is getting that eccentric overload, which we know is another driver of hypertrophy. We perform these for three sets of 10 to 12. Which brings us to the direct tricep portion of the workout, which is gonna once again be superseted with some additional bicep work for volume, but this time we're gonna opt to go a little bit heavier. We're going with the tricep close grip bench press, performing three sets of six to eight reps to add a strength-based movement that is more tricep focused to create additional gains. We select this exercise as a complement to the tricep extensions we did, which was focused more on the long head. Here, once again, now we're using some additional weight to focus on the medial and lateral heads. And the exercise we're gonna pair that up with this time is simply a dumbbell curl of choice. And I mean that. After all, curls are essentially curls no matter how you perform them. The fact is, you choose one of them, perform them for three sets of 10 to 12, slightly higher rep range, pair them up as a superset, and you're off and running. 
And that brings us to that final spot once again, and I have an interesting selection here to end the second workout. I want to work on some scapular control and some scapular strengthening, but I still want to get a little bit additional volume here for the chest, and this is going to be with the push-up plus. And the idea here is you simply go into the top of a push-up, but then you push all the way through as hard as you can, allowing your shoulder blades to wrap around your body into protraction. This is going to train the serratus and give them some stability that they oftentimes don't get unless you intentionally try to train for it. You're going to go three sets to failure here. I'm not so concerned about what that number is as much as I'm concerned that you're nailing the mechanics on this every single time. And there you have it guys, the perfect push workout broken down into both parts, part one and two, both of them here for you to view and make sure you take your screenshot so you can take them with you to the gym and make sure you get this right. Guys, remember, it's not just the exercises you pick, but why you're doing what you're doing that gets you the results. If you're looking for our step-by-step -step programs, guys, we have done that all for you already. They're over at athletics.com. If you like this series, if you like the perfect workouts, make sure you leave a comment below. Tell me what else you want me to cover. I'll do my best to do that for you. And if you haven't done so, guys, make sure you click subscribe and turn your notifications below so you never miss a workout when we put one out. All right, guys, good luck. I'll see you soon.